meeting of the Twinsburg Board of Education. This is Wednesday, October 21st, 2015. Mr. Aho, would you please call the roll? Mr. Stuver? I'm here. Mrs. Davis? Here. Mr. Felber? Here. Mrs. Terrell Waldron? Here. Mrs. Kane Criswell's absent. She is stuck on an airplane in Atlanta. I'd like to ask everyone to please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, good evening. Thanks for attending tonight. Hard to believe, but we've already reached the end of the first quarter of the school year. And on Tuesday, the students returned to the classroom and we kicked off quarter number two. And I keep talking about this, but it just seems like the years go by so fast. Uh, temperatures in the 50s, leaves are falling down, and our fall sports teams are already heading into the postseason of play. Um, when we meet again for the next regular meeting of the Board of Education, it will be November 4th. And that's the day after the fall general elections, which uh, will occur on Tuesday, November 3rd. So I just wanted to make an important reminder to everyone to exercise your right to vote. And just remember that your decisions are very important for our community, our schools, and all of the statewide issues. So just a reminder to please go out and cast your vote on November 3rd. On our agenda this evening, we have received the Treasurer's updated five-year forecast for our district. And Mr. Aho uh, was planning on doing a summary presentation, but I think we have a little technical issue tonight. So I will ask Mr. Aho when we get to that point in the agenda to summarize our five-year forecast, and then we will probably postpone the actual presentation until the next meeting when we can put it up on the display, and that way people who don't come to the meetings and watch on TV will be able to see that. So the actual report will be delayed to the next meeting. The planning tool that the board receives from the treasurer is the five-year forecast, and we receive that twice a year, both in October and again in May. Um, the five-year forecast includes updates from the last uh, May forecast document, which include revisions to the projected revenue that are based upon figures provided by the Summit County and the State of Ohio. This includes updated projections for property taxes to be collected, which are estimated by the county and the state basic aid, and also the reimbursement which is received for the TPP tax revenue, which has been lost, and those numbers are provided by the state. The five-year forecast, as I said, is a planning tool used by the board, and the preparation of that document and submission to the state is required by state law. The forecast is conservative by design and is accompanied by a narrative of assumptions that provide the basis for the data and the projections that it contains. The net changes to the forecast in this particular document indicate that the district will be deficit spending by just about $2 million this school year. The current projections show that without any adjustments, the district would continue to deficit spend drawing down on the cash reserve, and it's projected that the district's cash balance would be depleted by 2020. During past years, we have seen similar projections, projections and the board and administration have taken actions to address those projected shortfalls. And in a sense, we've avoided the icebergs, we've kept the ship afloat, and we continue to steam ahead. But it is imperative the board and the administration, moving forward, keep a fiscally prudent eye on local spending and respond appropriately regarding legislative mandates which direct action but do not provide funding from the state for those activities. As we've stated in the past, our decreasing revenue is a direct reflection of legislation that is enacted in Columbus. The state budget bill that was approved last June, which reduced our reimbursement for the TPP tax revenue, is an example of that. Yesterday, along with Mrs. Powers and Mr. Aho, I attended a meeting with our state representatives, Representative Christina Rogner and the Speaker of the House, Cliff Rosenberger. Two primary topics that we discussed involved the reduction of state funding related to the loss of the revenue from the TPP tax, and also the potential loss of federal funding that's related to testing that is related to the third grade reading guarantee. Mrs. Powers has been communicating with the ODE, the Ohio Department of Education, regarding this anomaly with the third grade reading guarantee testing 
However, at this present time, we are not satisfied with the current situation. Therefore, we addressed our concern with these legislators, and Mrs. Powers will be having further conversations and detailed discussions with Representative Rogner in the coming weeks. Regarding the topic of state funding and the TPP tax reimbursement, there's good news and bad news. On the positive side, it appears that there may be some movement to resolve the potential loss of over $800,000 that will occur in our district's budget next year. On the negative side, any new legislation that's approved will not fix our long-term issue, and our district still stands to lose approximately $6.2 million over the coming years. Just prior to this meeting tonight, after I had already prepared these comments, I received a couple of emails from Mrs. Powers with some updates. There's some new movement today uh, in the legislator, uh, in the legislation uh, in Columbus. Senate Bill 205 is a bill with a new amendment that proposes some changes to the TPP reimbursement phase out. Uh, the good news is we may not lose as much money next year as was originally proposed. The bad news is it doesn't fix the long-term problem, and it looks like they're still going to phase out that $6.2 million for Twinsburg. So we have to keep our eye on the ball and continue meeting with our legislators on that issue. We've been doing that for the last 8 to 10 years, uh, and we need to continue doing so. The Board of Education, past and present, has taken a conservative and strict approach to managing the financial condition of this district and has done so with a long-term strategic approach. The debate regarding the continued reductions of this TPP tax reimbursement will continue, and this is the one issue that could have the most significant impact on the long-term fiscal health of our district and is the topic that I ask our administrators and my colleagues to remain focused. The decisions that have been made during the last 8 to 10 years have stabilized our fiscal situation that could have been very severe had no actions been taken over the last few years. We've righted the ship and we continue to move forward. And it's my hope that the actions taken in the future will continue to be focused on maintaining a long-term fiscal health of our district and continue to provide for our key administrators and staff the resources that are necessary to continue providing an excellent education for our children well into the future. On a much brighter note this evening, we're once again reminded of why we are here as we recognize students for their achievements. And thus, a special welcome to the staff, students, and families from Wilcox Elementary, Dodge Intermediate and the Twinsburg High School. I know that you're here tonight for some very special recognition, so without further delay, I would like to turn the meeting over to Mrs. Powers for the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Stuber. Good evening, Board of Education. Good evening, families. It is so wonderful to see so many of our, our families and our kids and our staff members here tonight to celebrate some great accomplishments of, of our Tigers. Uh, before we get to that, though, I do have a couple of remarks I want to share. Um, first of all, I also want to uh, thank um, uh, Speaker of the House Clifford Rosenberger and Christina Rogner, our representative from District 37, who met with us yesterday um, over at Hudson, Hudson's Board of Education, and Phil Herman, who is the uh, superintendent at Hudson, um, and Catherine Sines, the, the treasurer, invited us over for the conversation. It was a very interesting conversation, covered a lot of topics. As Mr. Stuber indicated, funding, school funding was a sure, major sure. topic that we talked about, along with accountability measures, the local report cards, state assessments, and um, the a lot of conversation around charter schools and many school districts ac across the state of Ohio are really getting impacted in a negative sense with regard to charter schools and how those are funded and so we continue to keep a watch on, on, on all of those things. In our case TPP is the bigger problem for us um, but in some school districts for example our, our neighbors down in Woodridge uh, the, the charter school issue is a big problem for them. So. Um, our legislators have a big job. What is our concern isn't necessarily the concern of our neighboring school districts, so they have to be fair-minded in the application of the legislative language. Um, but you can um, bet your last dollar that uh, we're continuing to advocate on behalf of our students. And the conversation yesterday was very, very good. Um, we had further conversation today with the legislators. We continue to um, have those conversations along with our lobbyist groups, the CFFO, and also um, our alliance group. Just this afternoon, uh, Jen Farthing, Lori Slattery, and I were talking to the alliance group about similar conversations. So a uh, lot goes on behind the scenes. We continue to advocate for our kids because when it's all said and done, it's about the kids in our classrooms. 
and we have to make sure that we have the resources and the uh, staff, the talented staff that we have, the supportive community to make sure that we can provide for our students the very best and uh, we're proud that we, we have such successful students and that really is because of the support of our community. Uh, but then again, the community cannot do it on its own, and that's why the piece regarding funding is so important to us. We have to continue to work and advocate, and it won't be long here, um, parents and, and families, that we will be asking you to once again help us um, advocate. Last spring, you did a great job of sending postcards to legislators asking for consideration with regard to TPP and the biennium budget. Uh, when that call comes forward again, I'm really hopeful that you can jump on board and help us with those advocacy efforts because they really do listen to the community members. You know, uh, boards of education and administrators can talk and, and, and phone and email and send letters, but when our community gets up and really advocates for the kids, that's when the legislators really listen. And so when we begin that battle cry, I hope that we can have your support behind us in sending those communications to the state legislators. Um, a couple of announcements um, really related to our PTA. Um, I mentioned at our last board meeting that our PTA lost Market Day. Market Day used to be the big fundraiser. For many, many years, our community was supportive of all the PTA's efforts. Uh, purchased Market Day food once a month, and all that money went for our kids, either to high school scholarships or to classroom activities, school activities. And Market Day was uh, bought out by a different company and no longer provides that kind of fundraising effort for school districts. So um, our PTA is reaching out to us. They've changed their idea. Um, this year there's going to be a citrus sale. Kind of goes along with our wellness initiative here in the school district. And beginning October 23rd through November 6th, our PTA will be selling fresh citrus at, that will be in your homes right before the winter holidays. So we ask if you have the opportunity to consider supporting our PTA and all their efforts. Um, there is a flyer that's linked to our website. The information is already out there. I know the kids will be bringing home information in the elementary book bags this weekend. And if you can look for that and, and help our PTA with the support of this fundraiser, we certainly would appreciate that. Also, the PTA is currently um, uh, holding their PTA membership drive, so information is also on our website about our PTA membership drive. Um, Board of Education, we have been working very closely the last several months with Summit County's Fatherhood Initiative. Back in the spring, um, a couple individuals from Summit County visited the administrative offices and started to talk about this um, fatherhood initiative and, and helping us understand the importance of of their drive, and that is to engage our dads and our dad role models in conversations amongst themselves so that um, they can help their kids be more successful, not only in school, but in life in general. And so we had a big powwow over at Bissell about a week or so ago that included um, representatives from Summit County, representatives from the city of Twinsburg, uh, representatives from the Twinsburg Ministerial Association, and our, our building administrators and central office staff. And um, I'm pleased to let you know that the first session of the Fatherhood Initiative is going to be held on Saturday, November 14th from 9 to 1 at the Sanctuary of Praise. Um, up on Haddon Road, and uh, you'll be getting more information about this, but it's really about building bridges between dads and role models that are dads, and how dads can really have a great influence on their kids and help them to be successful students and uh, as they move into life. So look for more information. We're very proud to be a part of this huge initiative. I'm um, to understand that Summit County was uh, looking at Twinsburg because we're so north on in the county. And uh, they reached out to us and say, hey, we want to bring our initiative to your, your community because you're the northernmost community in our county, and we want to make sure that we can stretch from um, your border all the way south. So we're very, very pleased to be able to um, uh, partner with those, those organizations to bring this initiative to our, to our dads and to our dad role models. Um, also, uh, Board of Education, I want to uh, give one more um, announcement for our PTA. Uh, our PTA, in partnership with the Hudson League of Women Voters, is sponsoring the Board of Education Candidates Forum evening on next Thursday, October 29th at 7 p.m. over at our middle school. Um, all three candidates have been invited to participate in the forum. You'll have an opportunity to submit questions if you'd like to. Right on our website, there is a link off of the main page that goes to the PTA page. And if you have a question or two or three that you want to ask our board candidates, Feel free to submit those questions, and then they'll be brought to the forum on next Thursday evening. If you don't want to submit them electronically, you could always submit your question on Thursday night when you 
uh, join us for the forum. So we want to thank uh, Sherry Bada, who is the president of PTA Council, and our PTA Council at large for their interest in making sure that um, our community is well informed about the qualifications of our three board members. So we look forward to seeing everybody next Thursday, October 29th, 7 o'clock at RBC um, in the auditorium. So that's all of the announcements that I have for this evening, and we have lots of students to celebrate. I know that Ms. Villa is here and Mr. Asti is here, so I'd like to invite them up because we have many Wilcox children that are here with their families and want to be recognized. And this evening, um, Mr. Felber is going to help us, and Mr. Gatowski, I don't see a microphone here. Oh, okay, it's right there. Okay. Good evening. Thank you, Mrs. Powers, Board of Education, for allowing us to come before you. We have some great people to recognize uh, this evening from Wilcox Primary School. And we're going to start with some very special first graders that our teachers have nominated. This is, they're going to receive the Wilcox Rocks Because of Me Award. And we're going to ask uh, when we call the student's name that the student is able to come forward. And then also the student's teacher as well to stand behind them and represent all the good that they prevail to the students. So if I could have Emily Few. <laughs> Emily is, Mrs. Fink says this about Emily. Emily is a warm, caring student who is always looking out for others. She has a smile that is contagious and brightens everyone's day. She is always respectful to the teachers as well as her classmates. Emily truly stands by her pledge to be responsible, respectful, caring, and safe. She is a mighty Twinsburg Tiger Cub and the Wilcox Rocks because of students like her. And Emily says about Mrs. Fink that Mrs. Fink rocks because she does a lot of fun things in class. She always helps Emily with harder math by giving her other ways to help solve the problem. There are so many things that Mrs. Fink does that Emily likes. Mrs. Fink makes learning fun. Our next first grader is Chase Harris with Mrs. Frillo. <laughs> Chase deserves to be the student of the month. Chase comes to school each day willing to learn and always participate. He is a good citizen in and outside of the classroom and an excellent role model. And Mrs. Frillo is very happy to watch him grow in first grade this year. And Chase says that Mrs. Frillo rocks because she makes math fun, especially the adding and subtracting. She helps Chase remind him to sound out words and try his best. She is always so nice and does not yell. <laughs> Abby Whitquitz is here with Mrs. Kane. Abby has been chosen to the, as the recipient of the Wilcox Rocks Because of Me Award because she demonstrates outstanding citizenship. She is very responsible. She can be counted on to follow directions the first time they are given. Abby is respectful. She knows when to be a careful listener. She is caring. She is quick to help others in need. And Abby demonstrates safety in the classroom by always remembering to push in her chair. Abby is a pleasure to have in Mrs. Kane's class. And Abby says that Mrs. Kane is nice because she's a very helpful teacher. She is a very good teacher and al is always nice to her students. She helps them by understanding their math problems. And Mrs. Kane is one reason why Wilcox rocks for Abby. <laughs> Our kindergartners, we're going to start with Braylon Benson and Mrs. Wright. Braylon rocks because he is always tries his best at school. He works very hard to show respect to his classmates and teachers. He is always willing to lend a helping hand to someone in need. He can always be counted on to be doing the right thing, even when no one is watching. Braylon is an outstanding Wilcox kindergartner. And Braylon says that Mrs. Wright rocks because she makes Braylon feel happy. She is a good at math teacher because she always learns how to make different sets. She always helps students when they feel sad or gets hurt. She makes learning fun. <laughs> now
Next, we have Remy Cummings with Mrs. Jaskowitz. <laughs> Remy rocks because she is a model student. She always comes to school ready to listen and to learn. She is a good friend to others. Remy always lends a helping hand when needed. Remy should be proud of who she is and what she has already accomplished in kindergarten. And Remy says, Mrs. J is nice, and, Remy, and she likes her so much. Whenever she doesn't know what to do, Mrs. J is very helpful, especially when she's trying to make the mouth of her germ. <laughs> Remy says, Mrs. J makes me feel happy because I love her. I love school. That is why Mrs. J rocks. <laughs> I had to get some clarification on what the germ was, and it's an actual germ that they do. It was really great. Symmetrical, Symmetrical germ, yes. <laughs> And finally, we have Autumn Robel with Mrs. Ioni's class. <laughs> Mrs. Ioni is honored to nominate Autumn Robel for the Wilcox Rocks Award. She states that every day, Autumn makes good choices and is a caring friend to all. If she sees someone on the buddy bench during recess, Autumn goes over to the student and asks, asks if they would play with her. Autumn comes to school each day ready to learn and with a huge smile on her face. Mrs. Ioni is so proud to you, Autumn, and Wilcox rocks because of you. And, Mrs. and she says about Mrs. Ioni that she is kind and nice to all her students. Whenever a student has a problem, she tells them what to do. She is especially helpful with math. Mrs. Ioni makes Autumn happy and makes learning fun. That is everyone. Boys and girls, if you could stand there for a good picture, just for one moment, please. Wilcox families, if you could please remain here just until the Dodge and high school families get recognized as well. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Asti. Congratulations to all of our Wilcox Tigers. Boy, they make everybody so proud of their accomplishments. And I know the moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas are so very proud of each and every one of you. So congratulations. Now we'd like to ask our administrators from George D. Dodge Intermediate School to come forward. Our principal, Mr. Reggie Holland, Assistant Principal Beth Mariola, and Assistant Principal Iwanda Huggins. Welcome. Oh, good evening, everybody. We are here to celebrate the uh, wonderful students and achievements of our students at Dodge. And I have the pleasure of introducing our youngest members of Dodge, which are our fourth graders. So at this time, I'd like to honor from Ms. Palmer and Ms. MacArthur's class Gavin Joshua. <laughs> when we asked what his teachers thought about Gavin, this is what was said. Gavin is a sweet boy who is well behaved, diligent, and kind to others. He's a hard worker who listens and strives to, to be the ideal student. He is a responsible student who exemplifies what, what it means to be a tiger. Congratulations, Gavin. <laughs> Our second fourth grader we'd like to recognize from that same team is Alyssa Unanst. What her teacher said about Alyssa. Alyssa is a great citizen at Dodge. As a student council representative, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, a student council representative, um, Alyssa works hard to be a great leader who keeps all of the classmates informed and in the loop. Congratulations, Alyssa. And good evening. I'm Mrs. Huggins, one of the assistant principals as well, and I have the pleasure of introducing our fifth grade students of the month. 
from Ms. Xerox Mightness class, Lainey Demuzio. Lainey is a positive student. She is a sweet young lady with a great attitude. She is a responsible um, student and a great team player. Thank you for representing Dodge, Lainey. <laughs> Harindu Paris. Harindu is responsible. He is a great role model to his peers. He is a great team, team player, and he does represent his team well. Congratulations, Harindu. Good evening. I'm Mrs. Mariola, the other assistant principal at Dodge, and I have the pleasure of announcing this um, month's grade six students of the month. For Mrs. Haas and Mrs. Fenning, our first student is Sid Javeri. Sid's teachers tell us that he exemplifies good character traits here at Dodge Intermediate School. He is responsible, reliable, and trustworthy. Sid treats peers and adults with kindness and respect. Great job, Sid. Our next student of the month for grade six is Sarah Kimmel. Sarah is a very hard worker. If you could come on up, Sarah. We'll, there you are. Very good. Jumped ahead of myself here. Sarah is a very hard worker. Sarah is involved as she participates in classroom activities. She is a great friend to her peers, and she leads others with her good decisions and positive attitude. Well done, Sarah. So as we know, we produce great students by having great teachers. And we do a thing at Dodge which we call our top tiger. So our first teachers that we want to honor as top tigers are what we call our Tiger Works team. And that is Mrs. Williams, Mrs. Reek, and Mrs. Karalik. You want to come on up? what the students and staff say about them. The students say that she never yells, engages students in learning. We do hands-on science labs on that team and they always give us chances. Teachers describe the team as um, every child is theirs. They embody what co-teaching looks like and enters every, salute, in every situation with a smile. Congratulations to our top Tiger team. And our next um, top tiger is Ms. Maria Raska. Ms. Raska works with um, our reading students. She's one of our reading interventionists, and she had a prior commitment this evening. However, anyone that knows her knows her for the fireball that she is. And here are some of the great um, comments that um, students and faculty members made about her. Works hard for students and staff. Dedicated years of teaching to each of our students. Comes to school each day with a joyful heart. And this one I felt was touching because, you know, it just shows the type of person she is. She is a cancer survivor, and in every area of her life, she is Tiger Strong. And our final Top Tiger Employee of the Month is Miss Stacy Keys. Miss Stacy's, Ms. Stacy's uh, colleagues have said about her that she goes above and beyond when doing her job. She's friendly and pleasant, as you can see. She takes pride in her job, and her attention to detail makes all the difference. And, uh, if I can just say something from the administrative team, a as you all know, we were all new um, to Twinsburg this year, and this lady has taken such good care of us. 
and made us feel at home and taking her under our, our wing and we truly appreciate it. Um, we are going to ask the students to stay in place again so that you can take pictures, but I cannot celebrate teachers and students without celebrating family. So I'm going to ask our students to thank their families in the Great Dodge tradition and give them a round of applause as well for coming out. Okay, guys, I know your moms and dads and grandma and grandpas would like a nice photo of you, so if you can hold your certificate right in front of you for one moment and let your... Uh, the photo bugs here do their thing. As Mr. Holland and Mrs. Huggins and Mrs. Mariola just said, uh, we're so very proud of each and every one of you. Thank you for being such great examples for all of the students back at Dodge. There's almost a thousand of you over there, and you are a cut above all those thousand students. So congratulations. We're very proud that you are Students of the Month. One more round of applause as they are seated. Thank you. At this point, we're going to ask Mrs. Turingo and the high school staff. I know Mr. Silverthorne is here with her this evening, and we have a lot of high school students to celebrate. Big news about our commended scholars tonight. So, Mrs. Turingo, if you would mind coming forward. Just want to make sure they come on in. They're busy talking. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Networking, yes. Okay, tonight, uh, we have two groups to introduce tonight for our high school representatives. Tonight's Students of the Month include our Tiger Strong students, which is through our PBIS initiative. But first, I'd like to introduce our students that have been recognized due to their scores on the PSAT exam. Every year around this time, we get a notice from the College Board and um, National Merit that talks about our student scores. Tonight we honor seven students who scored in the top of 1.5 million students who took the PSAT last fall. The top 50,000 students are recognized and then they have another tier which is commended students, top 34,000 students nationally. We have seven of them right here in Twinsburg. So we would like to honor them tonight. It's, it's in alphabetical order. Maya Archambault? I don't see Maya. Maya here? Okay. Maya. Ian Denker. Come on up. <laughs> Congratulations. This is from your letter of commendation. And a lanyard for you. Who did you bring here tonight, Ian? Uh, my parents. Oh, there uh, they are. There. Congratulations. Yeah, come on up here. Parker Kelly. Come on up, Parker. Congrats there for you. Let me get your lanyard. There you go. Parker, who'd you bring here tonight? My parents. They're over there. Thank you. Rebecca Levine. Come on up, Rebecca. Lanyard. And your guests tonight? My parents and my aunt. Your parents and your aunt. There they are. <laughs> there. Thank you. Punita Paquetti. Punita from National Merit. And who'd you bring here tonight? My parents and my friend. Where are they? I don't know. There they are. Oh, yes. The gentleman. Oh, congratulations. Justin Roberson, come on up. From National Merit. And who's here tonight with you? My parents, right there. There they are. 
Thank you. And last but certainly not least, Miss Laurel Wardell and from National Merit. Laurel, here you go. Who'd you bring here tonight, Laurel? Uh, my parents, they're standing in the back. Congratulations. Your lanyard to be Tiger Strong. And these are the seven students that were recognized nationally. And you'll see their picture around. They were in the Twinsburg Bulletin today. Um, and also they'll share, uh, let's see, we had them featured on our marquee out front, but also we're hoping to uh, hear from um, scholarship opportunities from them and things like that. So we wish them well in this search uh, for the next step for them uh, when they leave Twinsburg High School and make us proud, of course. So here we go, Tiger Strong kids right here in front of us. Thank you for coming. All right, thank you. Good. Thank you, and thank you parents for joining your students tonight. Next group to come on up, we're going to feature our Tiger Strong students. These Tiger Strong students have been nominated by staff in our building for just general acts of kindness and just doing things for just being good people. And so for tonight, Mr. Silverthorne has our little bios, and I, I don't believe the students know who nominated them, correct? Okay, here we go. Thank you, Mrs. Turingo, Board of Education. Um, just like to congratulate parents too. Uh, it's always nice to see the the younger kids and and older kids and dress so nice and uh, especially the little Wilcox guys. My lord! <laughs> but uh, I did notice one thing. I have to point out, and uh, I thought it was kind of interesting. You guys don't think Mr. Holland has an impact? Come here, real quick. Stand up, Mr. Holland. Stand up. <laughs> They have the same sport coat on. I thought that was kind of neat. <laughs> um, I'm here to celebrate the uh, Tiger Strong Students of the Month. We have September and August. Uh, we have six fine students that we'd like to celebrate tonight. Um, nominated first in no particular order. Um, Miss Nancy Drain nominated two of these students. Uh, first is Abigail Burke. Ninth grade. <laughs> Abigail couldn't make it tonight, but uh, Mrs. Uh, Miss Drain said Abigail's dealing with a lot, a uh, lot on her plate, more so than most high school kids at this point in their lives. <clears throat> she still manages to come to class cheerful, ready to work. She's a remarkable, poised, mature kid for ninth grade, um, considering everything she's dealing with. She stands out as a leader in class every day, volunteers, participates, extremely organized, asks great questions, and is nice and helpful to her classmates. So Abigail Burke, congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Who'd you bring here tonight? Everyone in that back row. Everyone in the back row, wow. <laughs> the Delagram family. All right, we'll try this. Mrs. Grummet, uh, she has nominated Kamari Griffin for Student of the Month. Ms. Grummet says that uh, Kamari is so respectful, polite, hardworking. She's diligent in her studies, always strives to achieve her very best, works well with other students, and for these reasons, she nominated her for Student of the Month. Congratulations. Congratulations. Kamari, who's been here tonight? 
her parents and her little brother. There he is. Congratulations. Mr. Schaefer nominated Brendan Little. Mr. Schaefer said Brendan shows compassion and patience for his fellow students on a daily basis. In particular, shows this attitude towards students who are less fortunate than others. So congratulations, Brendan. <laughs> Alyssa Schaffner was nominated by Mrs. Chernick. <laughs> Ms. Chernick says she had Alyssa in class last year, appreciate her work ethic, artistic contributions. Uh, however, this year she's become more of a true leader a thoughtful reflection during class discussions. She pushes her classmates to consider other ways. Um, one of her peers recently shared to the teacher uh, that Alyssa's insights and references to text made that student more interested in the subject. Um, uh, she really focuses on thoughts given to my classmates, compliments them, and appreciates everything they do. Uh, when there is a contradiction to classmates' ideas, she's very gracious and diplomatic with her comments and differences of opinion. The entire class thinks a little harder because of her presence. Congratulations. A tough skill. Wait, Alyssa, Alyssa. Alyssa, come on up. Who are your special guests tonight? Um, my parents are here. Oh, the gentleman, yes. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Last but not least, Mr. Socrates nominates Stephen Callahan. <laughs> Mr. Socrates says he'd like to nominate Stephen for the months of August and September. Stephen's a senior in the job training program slated to graduate in May. He serves as a Tiger role model to his younger peers in regard to academic success, job development, and is utmost courteous to his peers and through his behavior. Um, it's been a special privilege for me to have known Stephen and all these students, and congratulations for being Students of the Month. Thank you. Great. Thank you for being here tonight, Stephen. My parents. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm not sure if this is being heard, but thank you so much for the support network at home, the extended families that are here tonight. Thank you. Um, I know at the high school, we, we say, you know what, it might start at Wilcox, but in the end, these parents are there all these years supporting our kids, so thank you so much. We appreciate it. Lots of students here tonight, lots of things to celebrate. We thank everyone for being here this evening. Mr. Yeah. Stuver, that concludes my report for this evening. Thank you, Mrs. Powers. Um, everyone, this would be a time you're certainly welcome to attend the rest of the meeting. It's uh, business stuff, but if you need to go, now would be a good time to go home and take care of homework, whatever else you have to do tonight. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Rob, nobody ever wants to stay for business stuff. I guess. I always try to leave too, but you always. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Bye bye, honey. Thank you. Okay, and while the last few are exiting, next on our agenda are the committee reports. And we do have a few committee reports tonight. I will start to my right. Uh, I know my colleagues here have both updates from uh, policy as well as finance. All right, well, um, good evening, everybody. Uh, finance committee met on Monday, October 12th. And a lot of what uh, you're gonna see on the agenda today was covered, the five-year forecast we'll hear from Mr. Aho. Um, there's also some updates regarding the five-year permanent improvement plan. 
Um, additional supplemental contract recommendations that are on the agenda tonight. Um, some further discussion about one of our goals on the Business Advisory Council. Um, so that was from finance. And we to go ahead and do, do policy. Um, there are several policies that are on the agenda for our first read tonight, and I'll just reference them very briefly because there are uh, quite a few. Uh, 2114 is a revised uh, policy that referenced the uh, meeting of state performance indicators. This is in response in part to House Bill 487. It aligns our policy language um, to, uh, to guide the buildings further and again the goal of towards an A, a rating. 2260 again is revised and this is a non-discrimination and access to equal uh, educational opportunity and this <coughs> is just an update of additional language for some of the protected categories. 3220 is a standard based teacher evaluations and that again aligns with our, our current contract language and state guidelines. 4122 uh, is also a non-discrimination equal op, uh, employment opportunity and that's very similar to 2260 and again with some protected classes and updated language there. 5113 is an inter-district open enrollment and again just some language clarification I think it was just one word in the policy update there. Uh, 5114 deals with non-immigrant students and foreign exchange students and this aligns with federal law and a couple of the, the uh, US visa laws that have changed. Uh, 5340, another revised policy deals with student accidents and clarifies a little bit more with the head injury and the concussion laws, um, some additional language around actual day of injury and uh, not returning to, to play or practice. 5350, uh, student suicide is additional uh, professional language, um, or excuse me, language around professional development that has been added to that particular policy. 5460 uh, deals with some graduation requirements and additional specifications around the uh, electives and the, and the number of uh, uh, courses required. Uh, 8390 is a new policy, deals with animals on a district policy, primarily dealing with service animals and some additional requirements, definitions for service animals. And finally, uh, the last revised policy, 8400, deals with school safety and extends some of the requirements um, that the district and the superintendent in the board required on the emergency management plan. So those are all in what's called their first reading. Um, by our policies, there will be a second reading at, at our next board meeting. And uh, those who wish to comment, either uh, uh, in between, you know, contact the board office. So um, I'll turn to my colleague, uh, Ms. Davis, see if I missed anything or any comments regarding no, policy. No, I think you summed it up pretty well. And um, like you said, some policies only have just a couple word changes. Others were um, updating to line it with what generally what's going on with the state. So that's it. I think those are the like committees that okay. I'm on. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, the Buildings and Grounds Committee met this morning, uh, and we received a uh, brief update from Mrs. Powers and Mr. Welker on some of the projects that are underway in the district. Uh, at this time, Mr. Welker has vetted uh, several uh, companies that will be used for architectural services and also a different list of vendors that are involved in uh, energy consulting that will help with some of our control systems and uh, HVAC systems in the schools. Uh, what we reviewed with Mr. Welker was the list of these companies and how they were rated per the request for proposal and the recommendations that he's going to be pursuing contracts uh, with the top two companies, uh, one for architectural uh, services and the other for energy. Um, so the next steps uh, with the contract negotiations will involve the scope of work that they will be involved in in the district as well as the fees that will be charged. Uh, we will see the details and the actual recommendations of these companies uh, at uh, one of the two meetings that are coming up in November. Also, uh, just in relation to our overall strategic, uh, strategic plan, uh, one of the things that we were looking at with our buildings just from a uh, view of maintenance was roofs. And um, it was an interesting uh, response that we received. Uh, Mr. Welker brought an interesting idea to the district and instead of just standing on the roof and walking around and looking at things and you might actually miss something just by looking around, they did an aerial view of our buildings with infrared technology. And what was shared with us this morning was the result of that infrared uh, mapping, if you will, 
And I think Kathy and I saw some very interesting pictures of the roofs of our buildings, which in some cases even surprised us. For example, the Dodge building, uh, which we've talked about, you know, internally having some things that we want to address. The Dodge building has zero problems with its roof. However, our newest building in the district, the Twinsburg High School, has several areas that need to be addressed. So I think uh, after our meeting, Mr. Welker was going to go up and actually take these maps and walk with some of the folks and actually put feet on the ground to go look at those areas that the infrared technology pointed out. So um, the thing about that is that what, what it's going to do is allow us to prioritize the work on these roofs so that we're addressing the areas that need to be addressed first rather than just guessing. And rather than just walking a roof and saying, oh, there's an area that needs to be addressed, we now have a way to create a list and prioritize that list over the coming years to make sure that all of the areas uh, that need to be addressed will be addressed in the right, uh, right manner and the right uh, priority system. Uh, also, um, the last thing we talked about this morning was uh, one of the projects that's been bantered about by previous boards, and this board has been the scoreboard up at the high school. It, uh, I think everybody would agree, needs to be replaced. We've uh, been looking at options to do that. And Mr. Welker presented to uh, Mrs. Terrell Waldron and I this morning uh, an option where we can use a company through a consortium bid, bid and get some pretty competitive pricing. And this company would actually help us with the recruiting and the marketing for sponsors. So the, the, the way this looks from a project perspective is over the life of, say, five to ten years, the sponsorship dollars would pay for the scoreboard and then maybe bring in additional revenue that could be used for other projects. So I think we're going to see some uh, recommendations come forward to the board. To my colleagues here, you'll see some pictures and some uh, more concrete information about this company once he vets all of that with them. Uh, but I think we, this morning, Kathy, we're talking about sooner rather than later so that we can get sponsors uh, lined up for next year. So I think this is something that we'll see uh, come to fruition in 2016. So I was very pleased to see that. It's been something that's been on our to-do list for a while. Um, and that was just in summary. I don't know, Kathy, if there's anything else you wanted to add. Um, no, just I was actually very pleased with the um, presentation that Chad gave us this morning. Um, I was actually surprised to be able to see the actual damage or the areas that were in jeopardy of having major leaks or having existing leaks. So um, gives us a good perspective of what direction to go. A lot of them did seem like they were um, centered around like heaters or devices that were up on the, the roof that, you know, some of them are easier fixes than others. Um, I was a little bit disappointed that our newest school did have quite a few um, issues with the roof, but then I was reminded that the school is not, you know, a couple years old anymore, and I just from, it is a newer school, but not that new anymore, and just like a vehicle after, you know, so many years, it does need the normal wear and tear replacements and things, so um, I do, you know, applaud Chad for getting that done, so also as far as the scoreboard, I am excited to see that moving forward. I think it's going to be um, a nice addition to our Tiger Stadium. The field looks amazing. I know we've gotten a lot of compliments on our field and, and I think this will just, um, in addition to that, be a great asset to our community. So thank you for that as well. Yeah, I have to just put a plug in for Mr. Welker and all of the people, uh, uh, Mr. Massalona that was here before and all the coaches and everybody that worked on the field selection. There were some things that uh, Kathy and I learned about turf fields last year and as a soccer referee who travels around northern Ohio I get to step on a lot of these fields and now I'm paying attention to some of the details that we learned about from Chad and I have to tell you this past year in one of the professional matches I did where they rent space it was a semi-pro game they rent space on a <coughs> high school field I'm looking at seams that are pulled apart and, and dips in the field and I'm going oh Mr. Welker told me to look for that. <laughs> And uh, recently I was at a field, um, uh, no names to be mentioned, but it was a newer field, and I could actually feel, and, and I don't know how else to say this, but the cheapness of the surface and the fact that it was slippery, and not only did I lose my footing, but the players were slipping and losing their footing. I've run on the Twinsburg turf, and I can tell you that the surface is quality. 
and what we learned about the, the grass and the density and less black pellets, I'm paying attention to that, and boy, you aren't kidding, that makes a big difference, and yet we still have the, the GMAX rating, if you will, for safety on our field. So well done. Um, I now have experience running around, and I can say I can absolutely attest to the fact that we did the right thing, so thank you very much for that. Thank you. So uh, I think we, anything else in committees? And moving on in the agenda, I believe because we've had some technical difficulties tonight, we're going to postpone the administrative report for the five-year forecast. Is that correct? Okay. So when we get to that motion, uh, Mr. Aho, I'll just ask you to make a few general comments when we get to that motion in the agenda, and then we'll just have the presentation be at the next meeting so that we can still share that with the public. Uh, therefore, next on the agenda is remonstrance. Um, as a reminder, the purpose of regular meetings of the Board of Education is to conduct business, and because the Board of Education represents a school district, which is a public organization, these business meetings are required to be conducted in public. Uh, these regular business meetings are different from community forums or other special meetings which are conducted with specific intent to engage or encourage active discussion. To accommodate public participation as a part of our regular business meetings, the agenda item, which is recalled remonstrance, is included, and the conduct for remonstrance is provided for in the Board of Education bylaws, specifically section 0169. Persons wishing to speak during remonstrance are asked to provide their name, address, group affiliation, if any. Comments should be limited to five minutes, and while statements regarding matters of general district policy or procedures are certainly appropriate, statements should not be personally directive nor abusive. Uh, nor should statements be made regarding any specific disciplinary matters regarding students or staff. Uh, to address those kinds of concerns, we ask that you submit in writing to the superintendent. So at this time, I'd like to invite people to the podium to address the board, and I do have one blue card tonight, and it is Mr. Deersing. So at this time, Mr. Deersing, I would give you the floor. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I have a couple items that I wanted to talk about. First, I don't know if any of you have been to the Twinsburg Historical Museum. If you haven't been there for a year or longer, uh, this coming Sunday is an open house from 12 to 5, and there is a, thank you, there's a, uh, a program, uh, Watches and Clocks. And uh, if you have a watch or clock that you would like it appraised and uh, a story about it, uh, there's going to be a number of people uh, there, so you won't have to wait. They put this, this group put the program on at the Western Reserve Historical Society. So unlike a lot of programs, it's not directed to everybody, it's individual one-on-one. -on -one. Then while you're there, you'll have an opportunity to see the uh, trophy cases that came from the school that they put in. A very nice addition and uh, super. Uh, the second, the, another thing that I'd like to mention is that the uh, while you're in the museum looking around, you might want to consider going over and see all the uh, souvenirs and different things that they have for sale. Would make terrific Christmas presents, stocking stuffers. One of the newest things. Uh, within the last year is a Twinsburg Timeline book. Uh, there was a, excuse me, there was a lot of effort put into it with pictures of old and new and very interesting, neat stories. There are some uh, videos. Uh, a year ago we did a program uh, uh, with a panel of retired teachers uh, and that was enhanced. Mark shot that for us and it's been embellished with other pictures and stories. Uh, it's well worth it. They have that down there. Uh, if you can't get to the museum, I would encourage you to know the Twinburg Historical Society has a website. You go to the main page and scroll down. At the very bottom, you'll see a thing, videos. You'll see some very, very interesting videos. They, there's about seven there, and we have a DVD of those also. But there's little excerpts of one minute to 12 minutes. As an example, there's Chrysler Corporation. The, the picture is the story of building the, the plant when it was built in 56 and 57 during its operation and its demolition. There's another video. Uh, oh, there's 
Well, one comes to mind about Reverend Samuel Bissell, his lost trunk. You're talking about perseverance, and the gentleman lost his trunk, but it, it's a real hoot. Nothing changes over the years. Talk about lost luggage. Well, there's a prime example of lost <laughs> luggage. Uh, <clears throat> real brief, I wanted to talk about Reverend Samuel Bissell. Some of, we know we have a school named after him. But he came to Twinsburg and he taught in a one-room log schoolhouse, cold and drafty on the, on the square. Then he and the Congressional Church built a combination building on the east side of the square where the uh, Walgreens sits. And it expanded. Uh, the gentleman was a very dedicated educator. But he grew that school and kept adding buildings. And then I brought a, uh, a catalog. It was, became known as the Twinsburg Institute. Talking about quality education in Twinsburg, they were, the Twinsburg Institute was known for excellence throughout. They had students coming from all surrounding states and even foreign countries. I, I just want to share with you just one thing about some of the subjects that was taught and preparing students who wanted to go on in life in college. Instruction given in Greek, Latin, French, and German, in algebra, geometry, trigonometry, mensuration, surveying, and navigation, in natural, moral, and mental philosophy, chemistry, rhetoric, logic, astronomy, mineralogy, geology, physiology, English grammar, arithmetic, and on and on. So, I just wanted to share that. Uh, being on the school board, nothing changes over the years. Just to give you an example, the school board, Twinsburg School Board in 1949 was concerned about their budget. And they asked for a 1950 budget of $90,449.43. <laughs> Things have changed. That, that part we would go through pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, if, if you haven't been to the museum, uh, the, the officers and trustees down there, they work their rear end off uh, maintaining that. And it, it's, it's a, real, a real gem that we have. And history is not the buildings that we live in, it's the community of people, made up of the people. And we have so many famous things. The other I just happen to think the other video that we, you'll find interesting, our connection to Albert Einstein. We had some very great people and we have a connection with Albert Einstein. So I'm gonna let you look at those videos so you know what I'm talking about. I would like to close with one thing. When it rains, on a dreary rainy day, I think that it must be God's tears of sadness when he sees all the hostilities taking place around the world. The indifference men have for one another and the apathy of so many people who are not doing anything to help one another. But then I think of a warm sunny days when it rains and a rainbow appears. God must be observing the good deeds some men and women do. Pausing to look at the rainbow is an inspiring sight indeed. A raindrop in and of itself is insignificant, but combined with others enables beautiful flowers to grow, cleanses the air, suffusing it with a clean, pleasant aroma. For our garden, the Twinsburg School District, to grow and be successful takes many raindrops. Each of us is a raindrop. One raindrop alone cannot make a garden grow, but all together we become a rain and our garden will grow. It takes the work of many people with many more people involved. The greater the deeds and accomplishments. So in a sense, we are like raindrops. The more raindrops we have, the better and stronger we are. Thank you, Mr. Stuber, for being a raindrop on so many occasions. Your leadership, dedication, and commitment has helped our schools to grow and improve. Your decision not to run again on your seat on the board saddens many of us. Thank you so much for your service.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Deersing. I'm not quite sure how I'm supposed to continue with the meeting after that. <laughs> I guess the, the way to do that is to continue with the raindrops and that's to continue with the business of the meeting at hand. We do have action items to attend to, so I will move on in the agenda to item H, which is our treasurer's reports and recommendations. Without objection from my colleagues, there are four agenda items here I would like to read together, consent agenda. H1, resolved that the Twinsburg Board of Education approves the following meeting minutes from the regular meeting of October 7, 2015, as sent to the board under separate cover. Item H2, that the Board of Education accepts the following financial report for the month of August 2015, bank reconciliation, the general fund financial summary report, and a financial report by fund as sent to the board under separate cover. Item H3, that the Board of Education accepts the check register for the month of August 2015. The total including payroll is $4,737,525.01. Item H4, that the Board of Education approves the five-year forecast as sent to the board under separate cover. Is there a motion for these four agenda items, please? So moved. Moved by Mr. Felber, and I'll go with the second by Ms. Davis. Um, under discussion, I would just like to say that um, the Finance Committee did take a look at the five-year forecast, um, as we always do uh, with Mr. Aho and, and uh, Mrs. Powers, um, and this one um, continues to show the, uh, the drop in revenue that is specifically related to our loss of the tangible personal property tax, which many of you heard me talk about over and over again, and I hope that we will not lose sight of that. Uh, as the board and the administration continue in the years to come. Um, the most impactful thing to our budget right now, um, and yes, we need to manage our expenses, but the most impactful thing to our budget right now is something that is currently outside of our direct control, and that is the loss of the tangible personal property tax. It's something that we discussed with our legislators yesterday. Um, next year, our district stands to lose about $870,000 out of the budget. And um, that number, based upon Senate Bill 208, might be a little bit less, but it's still going to be a drop, and then it's going to be a drop every year after that unless something changes in Columbus. So we will continue to lobby on behalf of our district as well as other districts um, for that. Uh, with that said, I just want to mention that the five-year forecast uh, presentation that Mr. Aho was going to do tonight wasn't able to be done because of some technical difficulties. Uh, we will show that at the next meeting. I think it's important that uh, we do that for the community members who like to watch this on TV. Uh, Mr. Aho, do you have any uh, just summary comments that you can give us about the forecast? Um, sure. Yeah, the, the five-year forecast is something we do twice a year. Um, it's something that um, it was written under law that uh, we need to do that. Um, kind of the, the whole reason the five-year forecast came about was so that it was a tool for discussion and, and um, you know, just to keep the board, city councils, you know, at any, any public body, um, keep them aware of what's going on in the administration so you can talk about what's going on. Um, so that way if something, you know, isn't right and then somebody has a, an issue, it's not all of a sudden it just pops up and, and shows its head. Um, this is something that you're working on all the time. All the issues come to light, you know, quickly so you can see what's, um, you know, out several years, um, you know, what needs to be discussed. The, you know, the TPP thing is, is a big thing that we've been discussing all along. Um, and that, you know, is somewhat brought to light with the five-year forecast. You can actually see, you know, over time how the, the tangible dollars are fading away. Um, and then we put that in the, and one, another part that's really important with the five-year forecast is to read the notes of the five-year forecast. Um, you know, it tells a lot of the story that goes on behind the numbers. Um, you know, to give some history, too, with the five-year forecast and how it came about. Um, and then how we developed the five-year forecast. Um, and the five-year forecast is really meant for a, a, a tool for discussion and, and you know, and, and a, guiding, a guiding kind of tool. Um, it's not meant to be specifically perfect to the penny moving years out. Um, that just doesn't happen. It doesn't even happen in big corporations. 
Um, you know, if you read the Wall Street Journal or Money Magazine or Bloomberg, you know, the, the big corporations, the big, you know, Fortune 500 companies, they're always changing their forecasts. The analysts on Wall Street are always changing their um, ideas of where these stocks and bonds should be at for all these companies. So it's, it's a continuing living document. Um, and it, it basically plots our course. It doesn't really, um, it's not like a step-by-step, -step, you know, plotting of the course, but it's like a general indication. Um, one of the things that I did on one of the, uh, on the, on the presentation is I use a barometer. And it kind of shows which way the wind is blowing. Um, you know, do we have a storm on the horizon? Are there dark clouds out there? Or is it, you know, a gentle breeze coming? You know, do, do we have that to, uh, you know, anticipate? Um, so really that's, that's what the whole purpose of the, the five-year forecast is. It's a discussion tool keeps people, you know, the administration and the boards and, and whatever abreast of what's going on financially. Um, and it kind of just, you know, it promotes the discussion of, of, of what's out there. Yeah, and again, we'll see the presentation at the next meeting. Correct. So if anybody have any other additional comments on these items? Um, you know, just a, a general comment in that um, we talk about this quite a bit, and it tends to become comfortable, and people are hearing it over and over again, and uh, we're not crying wolf. This is, you know, some serious numbers, and we need the, the community to continue to pay attention and be here for the long haul because this is not something that um, is going to be solved quickly. Uh, and as Mr. Aho pointed out, a lot of it is out of our control. Um, but what's not out of our control is continuing to voice our opinion. Um, the work that uh, Mrs. Powers and Mr. Welker do with our legislators and the meetings that we continue to have, um, it's not just here to, to hear a bunch of reports. These are serious. Um, serious things that are happening, and I would just encourage everybody to continue to pay attention. And uh, like Mr. Tiersing said, they were dealing with it in 1949. Number might have been a little smaller, um, but it's just as important in, in 2015. And I, I just kind of wanted to talk about also, I think um, absolutely we need to be paying attention, and I know that our community is on board with, you know, moving forward and trying to make sure that we're, we're handling the TPP issue. But I also do want to address, and we've talked about even today, um, as early as today, about you know seeking some corporate funding and forming some relationships out in the community and, and beyond. So I think it's important that we also look at communities like Hudson, who were able to build a large facility, a football stadium, um, you know, on someone else's dime. They didn't have to spend a dollar out of their budget to create, you know, a beautiful facility. So. I know that we did have an opportunity to talk on it a little bit today, but I think it's important that we keep those type of opportunities in sight as well and focus on trying to form those relationships. And I know that Chad has done an exceptional job um, in his former position, and I believe he's you know working in that direction as well for us. So one of the things that I think as a board we need to really pay attention to that and make sure that we're taking any opportunity that's presented to us to um, make sure that we get any funding that's available out there because instead of just focusing on what we're not getting let's look at what we can also get because every dollar that any type of corporation or relationship we can form with anyone to help with money I think it's important we do that and I um, completely concur the dollars from sponsorships will help with projects right. and especially with projects that are related to the permanent improvement funds i just want to make sure that from this body we don't confuse the community right the the tpp funds we're talking about that are being reduced are related to the general operating budget um, and while we do need to continue to pursue sponsorships to help us with special projects um, the actual operation of the district is reliant upon uh, the state funding, the federal funding, and the tax dollars we get from the community uh, to keep the operation of the district moving forward where we're talking about the general operating fund. So when TPP drops, corporate sponsorships can't fix that part of it. I just want to make sure understood. that that distinction is understood. understood. I just wanted to, I know that many people have asked what about the corporate sponsorships and I said, yeah, and I, I, I yeah. agree. We need to do that. We need to answer that question. I just don't want them to think that corporate sponsorships Understood. can replace the TPP funds. So. Understood. Okay. Uh, any other comments on these agenda items? Roll call, please. Mr. Felber? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Terrell Waldron? Yes. Mr. Stuver? Yes. And those four items pass 4-0.
Next on the agenda are our action items under personnel. There are three, and without objection, I will read these together, consent agenda. Item I-1, resolve that the Twinsburg Board of Education accepts the certificated licensed personnel and or contract recommendations detailed in the attached exhibit I-1 as per the dates, terms, and other applicable conditions specified pending satisfactory ORC background checks. I-2, that the Board of Education accepts the classified personnel and or contract recommendations detailed in the attached exhibit I-2 uh, per the dates, terms, and other applicable conditions specified pending satisfactory ORC background checks. And item I-3, that the Board of Education accepts the supplemental contract recommendations detailed in the attached exhibit I-3 as per the dates, terms, and other applicable conditions specified pending satisfactory ORC background checks. A motion, please, for these three agenda items. Moved by Ms. Davis, a second? Second. Second by Mr. Felber. Um, just one comment that I have is under I-2, I would just like to highlight that we have a retirement, 16 years to the district, and just recognize Jean Spencer, who is a janitor at RBC. Um, 16 years is a long time to be working in one place, and I just wanted to draw attention to that and wish her well. Um, any other comments uh, under these items? Roll call, please. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Felber? Yes. Mrs. Terrell Waldron? Yes. Mr. Stuver? Yes. And those three items pass 4-0. Next on the agenda, we have six items to work on together, consent agenda. Uh, this is under new business. Item J1, that the Board of Education approves the revised student guidelines for the 2015-2016 school year per the attached exhibit J1. J2 is the first reading of the new and revised policies Resolved that the Twinsburg Board of Education approves the first reading of the following new and or revised Board of Education policies. They are listed in the agenda and were described during the committee report by Mr. Felber, um, so I will call your attention to the list that is in the agenda. Item J3, that the Board of Education approves Ron Prusella to serve as a police officer for security at events for the 2015-2016 school year per the salary schedule approved on October 7, 2015. Item J4, that the Board of Education approves the attached listing of items from Wilcox to be deleted from inventory. Uh, this is Exhibit J4. Item J5, that the Board of Education approves the agreement with Lauren Innovations of New Philadelphia, Ohio for the use of Navigate prepared per the terms and conditions set forth in the agreement as sent to the Board under separate cover. And finally, item J6, that the Board of Education approves the revised salary schedule for the school psychologist per exhibit J6. A motion for these six agenda items, please. So moved. Moved by Mr. Felber, a second? Second. A second by Ms. Terrell Waldron. Discussion. Uh, under item J1, I'll just note that um, we had to revise the student guidelines because we had four uh, student teams and clubs that have been added and in addition to that or as uh, associated with that are the student fees. So those student fees are now listed in the student guidelines. Um, under J5, this uh, agreement, that Navigate Prepared, what this is is a tool, an online tool that allows the district to move our emergency management plans to a system that makes it uh, easier for our staff and the law enforcement folks, the safety folks to get to quicker and it is a secured system. Uh, but instead of preparing our emergency management plan strictly on paper and then submitting that to the state and it's on paper, we now have the ability to get to that uh, emergency management plan in a quicker manner if we actually have to put it in place and execute it. So that's what that tool is for. Um, I don't know, Mrs. Powers, did I cover that well enough, or do you have any Yeah, that's, that's great, Mr. Stuver. There is an, an added um, importance. It's always been important to have an emergency management plan um, easily accessible. Um, the Attorney General has um, really uh, raised the bar with regard to the specifics included in our emergency management plans. Um, for many years, they were just a binder in the offices. Now this will be an electronic device. So say we would have worst case happen at any of our schools, staff members would be able to call up their class lists on their cell phones, be able to take uh, attendance that way. Um, all of the floor plans would be accessible by our local authorities electronically. It just helps with the situation because in those cases, the minutes count. And we think this is a, a really um, outstanding product. Uh, many of our neighboring school districts have already done uh, their work with Navigate and uh, we're interested in doing the same. 
Any other comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Felbert? Yes. Mrs. Terrell Waldron? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mr. Stuber? Yes. And those six items pass 4 0. Still under agenda I, uh, which is our new business, we have two items that fall into purchases regarding the PI funds. I'll read these together consent agenda. Item J7 that the Board of Education approves the purchase of computers from Gov Connect Connection of Merrimack, New Hampshire, in the amount of $148,750, as sent to the Board under separate cover. Uh, and again, this project will be paid for using permanent improvement funds. And item J8, that the Board of Education approves the purchase of two riding auto scrubbers from Don Kem of Willowick, Ohio, in the amount of $22,000. This was sent to the Board under separate cover, and again, will be using uh, the permanent improvement funds. Is there a motion for these two agenda items, please? So moved. Moved by Mr. Felber. A second? Second. Second by Ms. Davis. Um, the computers are replacement computers for our teachers at Dodge, RBC, and THS. So basically we have some computers that have far extended or lived through their life. Uh, I do want to make note that when we talked about the purchase of these computers, I think it was in our finance committee meeting we were talking about the numbers, um, and it was mentioned to us that our technology um, leader, if you will, Matt McGing, uh, did a, a pretty awesome job negotiating. He was able to get the uh, price of the computers individually dropped from 730 to 595 by some shrewd negotiation skills, which, which saved the district quite a bit of money. So I just want to make that note and call that out because when our staff is watching after this kind of stuff, uh, I think it's, it's noteworthy. And then the floor cleaners, um, I don't know if you want to tell the story, Mrs. Powers, or not, but I know that you, you looked very closely at these floor cleaners. We did. We had sample models at Dodge, and both Mr. Welker and I were invited by the custodial staff to try out both the push behind model and the auto scrubber model. And so we test drove these guys, and uh, there is a significant difference. Actually, um, it'll be much better for our custodial staff because it's much less um, hard on their bodies. You know, moving those scrubbers is tough. There's, you know, lots of ground to cover. These are the riding ones, and we told the custodians no pictures, but we did test drive. So, yes. well, I, I think it's noteworthy <laughs> no that our pictures, superintendent huh? and director yeah. of business services both tried them out. And uh, before we're making this purchase, they tried them out. So mm -hmm. thank you. I want to see pictures. <laughs> no, no pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Any other uh, discussion on these two agenda items? Roll call, please. Mr. Felber? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Terrell Waldron? Yes. Mr. Stuver? Yes. And those two items pass 4-0. Uh, I will open it up now under agenda item K for miscellaneous. Uh, let's start with my administrative team. Do you guys have anything for us tonight under miscellaneous? Um, just the one thing I wanted to mention. Uh, we retaped our uh, November Twinsburg Schools Today show yesterday. Um, my guest is um, Mrs. Farthing along with um, Ms. Hauser, Shelly Hauser, is our uh, literacy coach from the University of Akron who's been working with our teachers at Wilcox and Bissell and our instructional assistants. And the reason I point that out is because Ms. Hauser provides for our parents a lot of tips how they can help children build early literacy skills. So that's our November show on Twinsburg Schools today. I think it's pretty good. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. From I just want to give a shout out to uh, Ms. Turingo for a, a first ever awards program held at the high school about a week ago, um, honoring uh, those students that uh, had achieved a 3.5 or greater in their first year in, in ninth grade. And there was also some perfect attendance awards, some teacher awards, and somewhere in the neighborhood about 186, is that the right number? Very impressive, very nice um, to see the students and the families come out during the day um, and celebrate what is not a, uh, an easy thing to achieve. So congratulations on a, on a very well uh, organized program. Anything else? I just um, wanted to thank Mr. Deersing for coming up. Um, I've lived in the community my entire life, and it's great to see um, some of our older community members coming forward. And there's a lot of rich history, a lot of older families in the community. And um, just wanted to thank you for that little bit of history tonight. That was great. And um, I will definitely try to make it up there. Thank you. Yeah. One last thing. I don't, I can't say his last thing. Vichusek? Oh, um, the oh, jealous that presented. Yeah. Um, 
who was at the high school, what was it, maybe two weeks ago now, a week and a half ago. Um, I think he really made an impact on the students and for any of the teachers who were there and any, the, I saw a few parents, but I, I'm just very appreciative for everybody who was able to put that together and bring that to our community. It was, it was definitely worth seeing. And it was, like I said, I think it made a great impact on our students too. So, yeah, thank you. I agree, it was amazing. They, the gym was packed, um, the bleachers were full, the floor was full and you could have hear, heard a pin drop. It was just, he engaged them so intensely and um, his message was amazing. So I, like Tina, I appreciate everybody that put it together. Um, you know, it was hard to keep the tears, you know, from coming out. It was, it was emotional and um, you saw the kids emotional, you saw the staff emotional and I truly believe he probably changed some children's lives that day. So thank you for everyone involved in bringing him here. And finally, I'd just like to say, Mr. Deersing, thank you for your comments tonight. Um, not only directed at me, that's very much appreciated. As a, a board member, I can tell you, and I know these guys can attest to it, you spend just a tremendous amount of time uh, as a board member behind the scenes that people just can't see. And uh, it is extremely rewarding to do this. It's very time taxing, but it's extremely re rewarding. And I think mostly so when we start these meetings off and we have the students up here. And that's every meeting we start out with a reminder of why it is we're here and yes we conduct business but um, it, it's very rewarding when when we start the meetings out that way so thank you for your comments and then just as someone who's a history buff I hope I can find this date on my calendar my calendar is packed but I love history stuff and I've never been to the museum so I probably need to come out and do that so thanks for the short history lesson tonight that was great uh, and then to know that boards of education all the way back to 1949 were yapping about budget what does that say, huh? Uh, and then finally, speaking of finances, Mr. Aho, I just wanted to point out that there was a young man tonight that we recognized. I think his name was Chase. He was wearing a tie, and he said he liked to add and subtract. So maybe you want to reach out to him as an intern for the treasurer's <laughs> office, um, or maybe just put him on your calendar to talk to him in a few years. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, we do have need for an executive session tonight. Um, I will make the motion that the Board of Education enters into executive session at um, 8.33 p.m to discuss employment discipline and compensation of public employees as per Board of Education's policy 0166A. Is there a second for this motion, please? Second. Second by Mr. Felber. Uh, and just a note, there is no action planned uh, after this executive session. Roll call, please. Mr. Stewer? Yes. Mr. Felber? Yes. Mrs. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Terrell Waldron? Yes. That motion passes 4-0. The board will now move to executive session. Thank you to everyone who stayed tonight.